What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm going to be walking you through the process for making your very first beat or song on the Machine Micro Mark III. I'm going to show you the entire process uh, completely from scratch, how to get into this thing, how to navigate the interface, and how to immediately get into making some music. This is the process that I personally use and hopefully you'll find this useful. So, Let's jump into the machine. All right, I've got my machine micro hooked up to my computer. And as you can see here on the screen, I've got the machine software pulled up. The first thing we need to do is just get some sounds loaded on to the pads. And there are a few different ways to do this. First of all, you can just bring in your own sounds individually. So each of these pads can contain separate sounds that can act completely on their own. And these can be audio files or entire plugins. And I'll show you both in a second. So right now, I've just got a singular kick loaded in here and I'm going to pull up my $5 one shot sample pack uh, link in the description. This has got a ton of drums and synth one shots in here. I've already pulled in a kick. I need to pull in a clap or a snare as well. And all I have to do is just drag it onto an available slot. And that automatically populates the pad with that sound. And you'll notice up over here, this little sampler plugin. When you drag a sound into a pad, it automatically creates an instance of the sampler plugin. And there's a ton of controls you have access to with this. I'm going to only scratch the surface because I'm trying to just get you into the workflow of actually making something quickly. But a couple things I want to draw your attention to right off the bat in the software. You've got a few different levels that you can do stuff on. You've got uh, a sound by sound level where you're controlling the virtual instrument, in this case, the sampler and effects. You've got the group. And this is basically everything on these pads and you can have multiple groups active at once. I'll show you that in a little bit. And there's the master, which affects literally everything. I'm going to stay in sound for now. So I've got this clap. I have these controls that I have access to, to kind of shape the sound a bit, or I can go into the mixer, which is represented by these little sliders here. This shows you a visual representation of what's going on with the sound. And you'll notice if I hit the different pads, it'll pull up the different tracks. That becomes really nice when you're trying to mix and uh, do so pretty quickly. And I can go in, I can tune this, I can adjust the saturation. Let me do that with a kick. You've got some other controls in here, amp envelope, which is super nice to have. I'll show that uh, in the context of a synth one shot where it'll make a little more sense and you can do stuff like uh, adjust how much of the sample you hear and adjust stuff like the number of voices it allows. This is the limit of how many of the sound are allowed to play at one time. In the case of like a kick, I don't ever want kicks to play on top of each other. So I'm going to set that to one. So each kick will cut off the previous kick. I'm going to leave the clap untouched for now. Let's get out a mixer and go back to kind of my main view. I'm going to bring in a couple of other sounds while I'm at it. Get a couple of hi-hats in here. And immediately you'll see I can get into finger drumming some kind of beat. And I want to actually go ahead and record this. Uh, also, I should mention, you'll notice the softer I hit a pad, the quieter the sound is because it's velocity sensitive. You can also set it to be fixed velocity so everything will be incredibly consistent. And this is something I do pretty often. I like it when my sounds are a little more on the consistent side. So right now I wanna go ahead and just record a super basic beat. There are a couple different ways I can set what I want my tempo to be. First of all, I can enter it in numerically if I hit the tempo button. And then uh, that gives me access on the very tiny screen to dial that in. Or you can tap the tempo. So this is the tap tempo button right here. That seems like a reasonable-ish tempo. And then I want to turn on the metronome, so I'll hit shift, and that'll activate the metro. The little text indicates what the shift command does. And in this case, uh, hitting shift and then the tap button turns on the metronome. So now I can actually jump into recording. The way the play and record buttons work on this thing is a little bit weird, so let me walk you through that. If you just hit play by itself, it'll just pick up wherever you happen to leave off. If you hit restart, it'll play it from the very beginning every single time, which is what I always use when trying to play something back. For recording, you can hit the record button and then hit play to start everything going, and it'll just pick up from the very beginning. Or my preferred option, hit shift record, and you get a count in. So it'll go one, two, three, 
four, and then start. So you have a little bit of time to uh, get a feel for the tempo, get kind of prepared to lay down a take. And it basically guarantees that the first note won't get missed. So let me show you that. And while I was recording that, you might have noticed that it set the length of my kind of section of music based on how long I played. So I didn't have to tell it, oh, I want this to be one bar long or two bars long or whatever. It just figured it out based on how much I played and when I stopped. This is super nice to have, and we can change that after the fact if we want to. So now, I'm going to hit Shift Quantize. That'll uh, lock everything to the grid. Correct my timing. Now let's say I want to get some more elements in here. So I can turn off the click at this point, and that'll stay there for the count in, which is super nice. Let's get this hi-hat in, and let's have it do like a little ratchet thing. To do that, you go to note repeat, and you hold it down, and you have control over how fast that goes. So for instance, so let's do that. Let's record that in next. Okay, so I messed that up a little bit. I'm going to hit shift undo to undo that last step, and I can shift redo if I want to do that as well. So let's try that again. Good enough for now. Before I go any further, I want to tighten up the mix just a little bit, just of these basic elements. Like, this guy's a little loud. This kick could probably come up in volume, that kind of stuff. And there are a couple different ways I could go about this. First of all, on the screen, I could like go into the mixer and adjust that stuff here. Or for simple volume stuff, I can hit the volume button, hold down a pad, and then adjust the volume more hands-on. And if you just adjust the volume without holding down a pad, it'll adjust the volume of your entire project, which I don't want to do. But if I hold down the pad, and that's a pretty good start for a beat. Real quick, I'm also going to go back into the mixer, and I'm going to double click my master to get access to my master settings. I want to put a limiter on here before I get too far. Just so as I layer stuff on, we don't get any clipping. Then to get back into the actual group, just double click on that group, and then I can have, once again, access to controls on a sound by sound basis. So we've loaded in custom sounds. We've recorded a basic beat just in pad mode. But as you'll notice here, there are more modes that we have access to. Step mode lays out different hits over time. So for instance, this is my first kick in my beat. It moves a little bit weird. It moves like this. So if I add another kick, for instance, that's obviously a bit much, but hopefully you get the idea. That's how you edit that in a hands-on way, and that will correlate to what's going on on the screen. That's the step editor. Super nice to have uh, a more hands-on way to program in notes. But so far, we've still just been dealing with one-shot samples only. And remember how I said you can have entire instruments on pads. So I've gone ahead and loaded in another sample, this little pluck sample, also from my $5 sample pack. And now I can hit keyboard. Now that is mapped to a keyboard. In this case, it's chromatic. This is an octave up. You can see the differently lit pads indicating that. I can also change a bunch of aspects of how it maps sounds to the keyboard. So I have to make sure that I have keyboard selected and then I can set my root note, for instance. So let me just send that an octave up. And if you've already recorded something, uh, changing the root note will not change the recording. Changing the root note just changes what the keyboard is set to in the moment, which is actually super convenient. Then I can tab through other settings. So there's different scale banks I can choose from. I'm just gonna stay on main for now. And then if I go forward again, I can change my scale from chromatic to say a minor scale. Harmonic minor. There are a ton in here that you have access to. I'm gonna just set the scale to minor for now. And now I can actually go ahead and record something. But let's say that I want my melody to be longer than the current uh, pattern. What I can do is go ahead and double that up. So different uh, combinations of notes live on patterns, which you access by getting to the pattern window here. And I've got one pattern here. If I want, I can start another pattern. And currently, it's empty because there's nothing in here. 
Let me go back to this one. One useful thing that I can do is double the length of this pattern. So that's this function right here. I'm gonna hit shift, double, and that doubled the length of the pattern and then duplicated all of my drums. So now I can go ahead and record in some sort of lead part. A little bit sloppy, let's quantize that. If I want, I can also go in and play chords. And you've also got a bunch of settings for these chords as well. So like chord type, which is lovely to have. That's super powerful. And I mentioned virtual instruments. Let me show you that next. So this is an empty pad that I've just loaded up. I've got all my instruments pulled up here. Let's go ahead and load in an FM8, just for an example. I'm gonna double click that to load that into that pad. Now, that entire FM8 plugin and its preset live on this pad. And you can see some controls of that plugin here. If you want to access those, let me go back to pad mode. I'm going to hit plugin, hit the little value knob here. And now I've got access to a bunch of these macros. And you can see how it changes on the screen as I page through these. That's a little bit clunky to work with, but that's pretty good for a device this small. But let me go back to keyboard mode, or let's do chords. Quantize you, and you'll notice on the screen here, it does separate those notes out, and so I can edit these after the fact if I want to. So this could really use some effects. That's what I want to do next. So let's go ahead and add some. First of all, I want to sidechain this pad to the kick. So I'm going to go to effects, internal, and choose a compressor. And then I want to go in and select sidechain input and select my kick as the source. In this case, this is that kick. Here's off. Is on. And I can dial that effect in as I want to. One of my favorite effects is the grain delay. So I'm gonna pull that up on this pluck here. Grain delay. And what I really like to do is send it an octave up and then increase the density and reverse it. and then mix it in subtly. You know, it kind of rings out like that. I took it a little too far at the very beginning, but then I was able to rein it in a bit. So this is a pretty good start for a beat, but let's say I want to layer a ton more. And there's one more way to import sounds that I haven't told you about yet. This is actually what I usually start beats with, and this is using machine packs, either the ones that are built in or the ones that you buy separately. So right now we've been staying just within one group, and you could just load up these pads and build an entire song in one group. You can absolutely do that. If I want to access a different group, I can hold down the group button and select another one. And you can have a ton of groups in here. So this second group is completely empty. So this first group is still going. And now I've got a whole other group that I can start filling up with sounds. And the way I want to deal with this is to load an entire like pre-made group all at once. So to do that, I'm going to select my groups. And I've got a bunch of these that I've bought here. And now I can actually select one of these groups and have it immediately populate all these pads in the second group. I can either do that using my mouse or I can hit the little search button here and start scrolling through them. So let me just arbitrarily choose one.
This is one of my favorite ways to deal with sounds. I find something that's just kind of there ready for me to start exploring, really inspiring. And typically I'll just load up a bunch of groups and then just start layering like a madman. What I really want right now is this 808. So let me check out what note this is. So you'll notice that's not the key I want it to be. So let's change that. That'll do. Also, in this case, I matched the length of my pattern with the length of the previous one, but different groups can have different length patterns if you want them to. And I can just keep doing this depending on how much my computer can take. Just keep layering, which is awesome. Sometimes Machine will even give you groups that are full of just like synths only or sound effects even. And so you can build up kind of a lot of musical chaos or at least a lot of uh, complexity and texture if you just keep layering stuff. And I can get back to my first group here, because let's say I want to create a variation. I'm going to go to Pattern. I'm going to duplicate this, drop it into this one. So now, I can switch between the different patterns. So this second pattern, let's uh, just create a super quick variation. Let me just get rid of these kicks. Put a little four on the floor thing going on here. Also, I should mention, if you're in step mode and you want it to follow the grid, you hit follow. And then I can switch back to the original pattern. You can also have entire collections of patterns, which are called scenes. So your scenes live in here. I've only got one scene active right now. I can also duplicate that scene. And then I can choose which patterns live in each scene. So if I want to do a bit of like a live jamming thing, or if I want to arrange something in the arrangement window of machine, I'm going to use scenes to control the different sections of my song. So what I would do when making beats is just make one big main section with a ton of stuff going on and then duplicate that, uh, get rid of a bunch of stuff from those new patterns and that new scene, and then add a bunch of new stuff or just create stuff that breaks off and gives me tools to work with in arrangement afterwards. When doing arrangement, you can either do it within machine itself or my preferred option is to go to export audio and you can export the multi-track audio. I would recommend checking the loop optimize option here, which means that it'll make sure everything loops super cleanly and then it'll export all the separate stems. And then I'll bring that into a DAW that's a little more meant for arrangement. In this case, I use Reaper and I'll use that to do some last mixing and mastering tweaks and to lay out an entire song. That's how I like to work. That's just my personal preference. There's obviously a ton more in here. For instance, there's an arpeggiator. There's this touch strip, which can be used as a pitch bend or even for note selection, which is kind of wild, uh, for modifying stuff on the fly or even for effects. You've got control of your tempo and your tuning, your swing, You've got a ton of stuff just in this little device. And of course, you've got a bunch of really powerful plugins that come with the machine software that you have full access to for a bunch of custom sound design. This is way deeper than I can get into in just one video. And I fully intend to keep exploring this in future videos, but hopefully this gives you what you really need to know in order to make your very first beat and not get too bogged down in a bunch of tiny details. If you'd like to see the process for making a beat, not on the micro, but on a larger machine like the Mark III or the Plus, you can click or tap up over here. I did a whole video on that. And if you'd like to see a bunch of beats I've made with the machine micro, you can click or tap down over here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.